Ladies and gentlemen, to reiterate and highlight the key takeaways from all panel discussions and presentations. Much food for thought, the key learnings and recommendations that we may deliberate upon and operationalize in order to make India Atman Nirbhar in the semiconductor ecosystem, preparing it for a robust and sustainable state. Ladies and gentlemen, may I please request Sri Amitesh Kumar Sinha, Joint Secretary, Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, to summarize the entire day's conference for us. Thank you. Thank you. So, when Ajit Manvaja sir is here, who is uh, guiding us, who is the friend, philosopher, and guide of India Semiconductor Mission, so I will request him to give his key takeaways. And only when he is coming, I will say that we have the baseline. Government is delivering. Whether incentives can be given or not, you can see the pay life scheme of METI, when mobile manufacturers are getting pay life. Every month, two or three pay life investors are getting. So what we are promising, it will be delivered as it is, as minister has talked, that we are walking the talk. We are just not uh, doing the lip service. There is a baseline. And baseline is, is really, we are about to cross that thing. The policy is in place. Uh, when 87 percent of the import materials are already there in Taiwan and they are surviving, there is no case that India doesn't have the same kind of ecosystem. In last 10 months, things have changed. What Siddharth Patel has today equaled, that the kind of response he is getting, the same kind of response India Semiconductor Mission is also getting. Earlier, we were looking uh, for the proposals. But now very, very credible players are now approaching government and we are in discussion with them. I think this will take some time. It is a marathon and we are ready for that. This policy piece is also not one time. There are many much uh, more policy legs will also come. Without taking much time, I request Ajit Manuja sir to please guide us what are the key takeaways and we are ready to improve anything which he will say. Thank you, uh, first of all, uh, many of you have left, but uh, those who are here, if you enjoyed the day, give a big round of applause for the and emails 
two o'clock your time, local time here. I don't think Amidesh ever sleeps. So if one thing you can do while I'm going back to US is tell them to take some time off. Otherwise they will burn out and we'll have a big problem. So that's one takeaway. So again, leadership is there. For the first time we have the right leadership. As a result of that, policy is very clear. We have a very competitive policy that CHIPS Act in US, CHIPS Act in, uh, in uh, Europe, in Japan, now in India, I think they're all comparable. And I can tell you that the discussions we had with the last panel, most big companies are not looking for, for subsidies. You don't run business based on subsidies. If you make your business model based on subsidy, you are making a big mistake. But in order to have the level playing field, you need to have some kind of a partnership with government, the some state from the governments, especially in the green field country like India. So, but what has changed for semiconductors? I talked about growth this morning. The growth is definitely going to happen. It's guaranteed. 1 trillion, 2030, 2032, doesn't matter. Because it's not 2040. It's going to happen. You can take my words for it. I'm sure it's been recorded also. But what has happened is the semiconductors have become the most strategic industry for every country in the world. Because, because of pandemic, they realized that how important it is for national security, maybe cyber security to, as is technology but not pandemic related, but the economic security. But I think more importantly for economic prosperity. I get calls because being a semi hat, semi provides support on the ecosystem. I get calls from the countries you can never even imagine. Would you imagine Uzbekistan wants to have ecosystem in Uzbekistan? How many of you will think that you will believe that Morocco, Kuwait, Qatar, Brazil? I've been getting constantly calls from many countries. Sammy, please come help us to establish ecosystem because it has become the most strategic industry for the world. It intersects with every industry you can think of. And I said this morning. So, <clears throat> what are the takeaways? But having been involved with the, with, the, with the government for the last 30 years, and especially in the last three years, it's changed from Karayan. That's the difference. So in English, yes, something is going to happen, but now in English, it's happening. I am convinced, and it's going to happen. So I think one other takeaway and action item for, for Mighty is that we talked about what are the gaps we have in the ecosystem. You saw my slide on the ecosystem. We know the gaps, but there are a lot of gaps we don't know as a specifically, but we need working groups for each segment of the ecosystem. These working groups should meet on a regular basis and talk about the gaps and what recommendations they're making. And being an ISM member, I think I will be speaking on your behalf to the government to let's help close those gaps. And why these working groups? These working groups should really remain in place for months until the, chap the work is completely done. Because mighty bureaucrats will change. They will move on to some other role, they get to different states, but the working groups should stay. So there will be continuity, otherwise we'll start all over again after the leadership change. Even the ministers will change. So I think that's one, my strong request as an action item. And one thing, being an American citizen, and so I need to quote the American president, JFK, John F. Kennedy. He said, ask not what country can do for you. Ask what you can do for the country. I think the time has come for you and me as a fellow Indians of, of Indian origin like myself, what we need to do for this country. And when I see this light, Mark Patel who came here this from U.S. spectrum for this meeting. I did not see his slides before he came. I did not talk to him about his slides. But this slide really tells a lot of story here. 
All the big countries are there, China, Europe, US, Taiwan, Japan, South Korea, and the rest of the world, but looking at the big countries who are the semiconductor hubs. What are the smallest two countries? Taiwan and South Korea. And they have the best performance, best ecosystem in the world. So what, what is the takeaway there? My view, my understanding is South Korea does not export anything. Yet, they have the strongest ecosystem and they are probably the number two in the world in terms of semiconductor muscles, semiconductor technology, the leadership and so on. And Taiwan, everybody knows. What have they done right? It's not the government is always putting money on there. The people decided we want to be the best. It's the willpower of the people. I probably gone to Taiwan 100 times, China 100 times, Korea maybe 70, 80 times. I see the way these people operate. It's my country, I'm going to take care of my country, I'm going to support my country. And I think that's the what fellow Indians need to think. Again, ask not what country can do for, 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 for fellow Indians, fellow Indians can do for the country. So focus, persistent, and as I said this morning, in readiness, at least the, the, the companies were about to come after they complete their formalities and uh, due diligence. We are at the scale of uh, 9 or out of 10, my, my, my credit score for them, versus 3 out of, three out of 10 uh, for 9 months ago. So I think we are there. Now it's up to us to make it happen. So I think. Uh, uh, you have done a fantastic job in helping shape the policies, helping with these candidates who are coming with lots of questions. Now it's time to the next hump. Once we cross the hump, and a lot of people ask the question, I think uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Nayak, you were asking about PSNC. I can assure you, once you get the first one or two or three companies, others will follow. Not everybody will come at one time. But we cannot fail. It has to be a flawless execution on our part. And again, just think, these two small countries, Taiwan and uh, South Korea, what they have done, what you cannot do. I'm too bad that most of my Taiwan friends left uh, before this session. I would have loved to have you guys spend time with them to understand what's in you. It's so different that you have done a remarkable job. I go to Taiwan. I tell them all the time, please identify two or three new Maurice Chang's. One Maurice Chang has developed the foundry model from total non-believers to the largest uh, company in the world. It has become a household name. My neighbor asked me about six months ago, Mr. Marocha, I saw you on CNBC and you talked about chip chip shortages. And you didn't really explain when the shortage would be over. Is TSMC not delivering? A 10 year old kid asked me that question. It has become a household name. So, if TSMC has done so well, I mean, they eat the food like we do, they breathe like we do. Only difference is they are from Taiwan or they are from India. So, think about it. With that, I'll give the floor back to Mr. Amiteshi for your last closing remarks. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. So, I request all of you for a big round of applause for him. He is a strength and pillar of behind the investment of the country. And once again, thank you all for uh, staying so late in the evening. And on Saturdays, you are here. That's uh, uh, that is clear symbol of your love for love and passion for semiconductor industry. I'll request all of you to kindly join for IT. And uh, there we can chat and then we can discuss. Thank you so much for coming, and you will keep on doing it. Thank you. Thank you so much ladies and gentlemen for your very, very interactive participation.
Uh, I reiterate sir's uh, request to join us for Haiti. Thank you very much. Have a lovely Sunday.